It's okay. I like I like I like recording random samples of audio anyways because then I end up using it against Punk. Absolutely. That's what you gotta do. You do what you gotta do. <laughs> uh oh, blackmail. Uh, he's it's like, uh, what was it, Mike? In the last episode we did there, uh, the finale, or you're like, don't don't record this, and I'm like, I'm pu- I'm putting this. In. It's it's going into the episode. I think it happened two or three times actually. I like just blocked this out, and then just uh, brought some things that uh, I you made into like a little skit right after. So. I did. I, I always try to keep everything. So, uh, Mr. Romero Matthews, welcome to the Mr. Mike podcast, Wrong Answers Only. Thank you. Pleasure having a local Montreal, uh, I want to I say celebrity, because you're, you're <laughs> like a celebrity, right? You're, you, you know, you're into film production, you're all, <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, celebrity is a very loose term. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very, well, so, some people think I'm a celebrity on Twitter, but I'm not, so... You know, I, uh, I actually, I actually think you are a celebrity on Twitter. To be now that you bring it up, no, no. I, somebody said it the other day. And I'm like, listen, I, I walk the streets. I can go get a coffee. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there's probably more people on Twitter that know me from the United States than Canada, which is ironic. But uh, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, it's it's quite interesting because I started uh, with education based stuff for my McGill courses and. Um, I kind of took off and I guess it snowballed and uh, now I got writers, uh, voice actors, all kinds of random people following me, which is really cool because I get to connect. Sure. Yeah. Now we're doing the podcast as an extension. So this is, this is like a, a different way to connect with people and share stories such as your own. So uh, Mr. D and I were talking about you just slightly before, just to give him like a kind of a, a kind of a rundown and um he checked out some of your stuff and I've been looking at your stuff and Mr. D I get ready. This is Meryl Matthews from Montreal, Quebec. And I was just telling him before that you're a huge fan of pop culture, right? You said yes. about the, especially the nineties music and movies and <laughs> books. And in your spare time, you, you love to write and you also make short films. So before we get into your film production, your movies, uh, some of the other places you've I've interviewed. What are some of your favorite 90s movies? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd say the first one that comes to mind is Train Spotting. Oh, Train Spotting. Yeah, yeah. I still remember I was like 20 years old and I was sitting there and I thought, I have never seen anything like this ever before. And I still remember the whole end sequence. Yeah. I don't know if you remember the end sequence when Ewan McGregor is like has the money and he's trying to like hit, hit the crazy guy that he's like partners with is asleep and he's trying to take the money away and he leaves. And I just felt my heart beating the whole like just so fast the whole time. And I still remember that to this day. I still remember. So that's definitely up there. I think I have to say Pulp Fiction, even though I'm not. I'm, I think Tarantino's done better stuff since. I don't, I think Pulp Fiction is a good, like, you know, conversation. It's got some cool things in it, but I don't think it's his best film. I have to agree with you on that one. Yeah. Give me the two Kill Bills yes. over Pulp Fiction. Like, no, no question. Um, listen, I'm kind of a bit all over the place. I love Clueless. I love Forrest Gump. I love Boys in the Hood. Yeah. That was the cool thing that I love about the 90s is that there was just a lot of variety, like even in music and movies, it was just like there was all kinds of different things. And it was like cool to, you know, you could like, you know, a film like Boys in the Hood. And then you could also like Clueless at the same time. Like it was like, you know, that's the way it went. So, yeah, I could I could really talk about 90s stuff a lot. (laughs) That's that's a whole other podcast on itself, right? It really is. I find, you know, even one thing. I mean, I, I try not to do it as I'm getting older, but like the fashion, I, I don't know why, but I still like to tuck in my pants 
<laughs> even if it's like my day off. <laughs> they used to always do it. I don't do it. I try not to do it. But every so often, I'm like, I'm gonna take my my my. I'm gonna tuck in my my shirt and my pants. <laughs> I don't do it all yeah. the time, but every so often, I'm like, I like this. Yeah, no, of course. I'm guilty of like still holding on to some '90s sort of things, '90s styles also. And then either my daughter or my wife will be like, um, no. And then I'll be like, okay. <laughs> uh, I like the fanny pack, but is that from the nineties? No, that's people do that now. It's back, eh? The fanny pack. Big time. Big time. I should bring it back. I gotta carry my EpiPen and different things, you know. So Oh, I have an EpiPen also. Oh, what are you allergic to? Nuts. Uh any any specific nut or all of them. Oh my goodness. I've been dealing with uh well my Mr. D knows. I went into anaphylactic shock when I was 29. Now we're, we're, how old am I? 38. So <laughs> do the math. We haven't, years. yeah, we haven't figured out what I'm allergic to. And then recently I had a, a hazelnut flavored coffee. Uh, this was the other night. I almost went to the hospital. I was, oh man. I, I was like, I was just on fire. I'm like, oh, I can't breathe again. But my wife looks at me. She goes, do you want to call the ambulance? I'm like, no, let's just wait it out. I'm like, when I turn like a tomato, then we'll go. But uh, I, I can't imagine. I, I haven't, knock on wood, I haven't used my EpiPen yet, but um, Benadryl, is, Benadryl. The, is the key to everything. But yeah. you get good sleep afterwards after you take it. <laughs> it, it is, <laughs> like, it's... okay, I feel better, but now I can't lift my head. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I keep some handy. It's um, that moment feels terrible. It's the, it's the next day after I sleep, uh, I wake up and I'm just, oh man. Yeah, you're just like, messed up. You messed up, but you feel so much better. Yeah, you're like totally. I, I definitely had an allergic reaction. So, all right. So, uh, fanny fanny pack and epipens. Like here, <laughs> here we go. Um, and what about uh, some books? You like you like reading in general, you know? or yeah. well, is there any books from the nineties, or you have books in general that you really covet? Let me see. It. Any books that? Um, well, if I think about the nineties, that was sort of like my um, Lord of the Rings. Yeah the Anne Rice vampire chronicles like that was that era I find of late um I've been more into reading um like music biographies a lot like okay. I've been really into that I don't know if you guys have checked out Dave Grohl's I, uh, book I heard about it I heard it's fantastic it's so good oh. it is and if, especially if you live through that time period with Nirvana and yeah yeah if you like the Foo Fighters and and it was really like weird timing because um i got it from the library and i got it on the day that taylor hawkins died oh. and so you're reading it and you just have that going on in the back of your mind and he talks so much about him and just how much he meant to him, how he was like his best friend and, and you're just your heart breaks just sort of it has a whole other spin to it now i think but it's a really really amazing amazing book and um as well uh just that I, I also read Sinead O'Connor's um, memoir as well, which is awesome. Really, really intense though. It's very like, she's lived a really hard life. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, she also, I mean, she speaks a lot about her kids and I don't know if you've read her, one of her children committed suicide a couple of months ago. And oh, I didn't know that. Like, again, it was just like a whole other, like you read it and you're like, Oh man. This is just really, really hard. But she's led a really, really, really tough life. So that was a tough read for sure. Got to add those to my list. Yeah. And also, um, uh, there's a great book on Buffy St. Marie that I read that is super awesome. It's really great. I had absolutely, I mean, I knew who she was. I had absolutely no idea just how much of a trailblazer she actually is. Really great. Those are really good. So yeah, that's kind of, I like fiction stuff too, but the last little while I've been really enjoying, you know, reading, especially about artists that I follow and that I know. It's like, they like really like the uh, personal connection. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Especially those are hard hitting, but uh, yeah, I, I'm going to have to add those to my list. I have a bunch of books sitting on my shelf that uh, a couple people sent me from Twitter actually. Yeah. But I just, I, I, people send me things and I just like, I'll, I'll get to it. And I just, <laughs> they're piling, they're piling up and uh, I gotta, I gotta find time. Uh, that now that I'm off there, I think he's got probably a few hundred books there. That's just right now. It's not been moving too much with all, everything that he's he's been doing lately. Like he's he's uh, he's got like twenty different things going on. So yeah. it's just a collecting dust right now. Yeah. The well, the good being, thing anyway. the good thing about books is that they they won't go away. They'll just be there ready for you whenever you're ready. They're timeless, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I've done that. I've I've 
I put some books on the side and with a bookmark. And then five years later, I'm like, I didn't, yeah. I didn't finish this book, but I, I remember exactly where I left off. And I remember the beginning of it. So sometimes, sometimes I do that, but that's, that's more of me just kind of like throwing books and stuff everywhere. For sure. Yeah. So, okay. So uh, books, movies, and uh, music. Who's uh who's your favorite nineties artist or band? I'd say artist is probably Alanis Morissette. Alanis Morissette. I think I uh, I and I'm actually going to see her next week. She's coming to Montreal next awesome. week. I haven't seen her in 18 years, so that's going to be awesome to see her again. Um, yeah, no, I really really connected with that album, and I've stayed loyal to her all this time. And her stuff has been really interesting. Uh, bands, I I really like Massive Attack from the nineties. They're a band from England that I, I really, really loved a lot. Um, oh boy, I'm trying to think. Uh, I, I like Prince. Prince was also somebody that I always, you know, loved. And then I kind of go all over the place, not just sort of like 90s and stuff, but yeah. you know, I love Stevie Wonder. I love Joni Mitchell. I, Simon and Garfunkel, Coldplay, you know, Janet Jackson. Mm. Janet Jackson, she was a, you know, the love of my life when I was 13 years old. In the 90s, so, yeah. <laughs> I I started, uh, I, I remember around 12 years old, I, my sister was trying to get me into like uh, dance music, like MC Mario was big at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. um, and then the, uh, what do I have? Oh, I like I had some random CDs like the Spice Girls, Wyclef. Guilty, me too. Yeah, like Wu Tang Clan, Thirty Six Chambers album, uh, and then I had my father's records, so I had a record player and I played some vinyls, and then I listened to like the Rolling Stones or the Village People. So I, I had a, I had a like a kind of like a melange growing up, and then as I got older, I sh- kind of shifted more to like the classic rock, rock, metal, and then I yeah. got I got into like gothic metal, and then I went to alternative, and then I went all the way back. Like I, I'll swing. Like I'll listen to Justin Timberlake. I'll, I'll listen to Metallica. So I, I kind of over the place myself. But it really depends on your mood. It does. It really is. I'm a bit all over the place too. I'm the youngest of like um, five, so my siblings are a little older than me. Oh, and wow, stuff. Yeah. So I had lots of different kinds of music uh, in the house. So yeah. So I find my my taste in music is a bit all over the place. Also, like I, I've noticed, I think all of us, even like if you're like you have like a certain genre, like let's say like you just like classic rock. There's always some songs that people are embarrassed that that they used to love or artists that they used to love that they don't mention to anybody. I mean, yeah. me, I have no problem saying to like the type of groups or even like the artists I love. I was a bit like Mike too, back in the nineties, whether it's Marilyn Manson, Ace of Base. Oh, Ace of Base, yeah. Ace of Base. Yeah. I, I was even listening to them lately. I was like, man, I, I wish <laughs> they, I, it just brings back old memories, especially when I was in Europe. I, yeah, no, I, I, it's funny because um, I, I listen to the 90s station on Sirius like every morning and stuff. And it's funny, as you get older, the songs that you're like, I'm not listening to this because they're not cool. As you get older, you're like, you know what? This wasn't that bad. And I feel like Ace of Bass was kind of one of those groups at the time that was like, every, like it was like, no, I can't get into this. But now when it comes on, I'm like, Oh, I kind of like this song. <laughs> or, you know, just put like a remix in it or something. Hey, it's not so bad, you know? You're just sure. like, it's so great. Have a mashup. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ace, Ace of Bass, I, uh, oh man, that brings back memories. That's Ace it. Yeah. You know, or, uh, there, there was even other groups too, like uh, like you were talking about, like, like the Foo Fighters. Um, and there's one song that has been playing lately nonstop. It was a Canadian group. It was from 99. Uh, it's not coming to my head right now. On show? The, the video clip. Sorry? On show? It could have been on show. It's, I think it's, the uh, the artists were, I think it was a brother and a sister. Oh, and um, I know exactly what you're talking about. Was it the White Stripes? The White Stripes. Even though I think they're fake brother and sister. I don't think they actually yeah. were. But are you thinking about the White Stripes, Mike? No, it's not the White Stripes. Oh. It's another group. It, Brother it, and sister, it, eh? A one hit wonder in '99. Man, I. It, it's lately, like the last two weeks, they've been playing that song over and over again. No way. If you think about it, and it comes to your mind partway through, just shout it out. You just say, yeah, exactly. It, I'm sure it's gonna come. It's gonna come. 
That's that, that's the best. I got it. I got it. Thirty minutes yeah. later. That, that's, Just do it. I would love that. It's yeah. over. The whole podcast is over. Hey, Mike, I finally got it. All right. So, music, movies, and books. Awesome. That's uh, we got a lot in common there. And you also studied at Concordia University in uh, the film studies program. I did. Yeah. And I'm um, actually Mike and myself uh, studied at Concordia University when we did our uh, yeah. bachelor's degree. Nice. Uh, we didn't study film, but uh, you studied film, and then you went on to start making your own short film since 2016. So, what what led you into film study? Uh, I know we talked about some of some of your movies from the 90s that you enjoy, but is there anything that really uh, inspired you or propelled you to be like? Because you really had an interest in movies. Yeah, no, I um, I often say this to people, but the first movie that I ever saw in my life in the theater, I was six years old, and it was ET. Et yeah. and as a kid, I remember just feeling the film like it just affected me so profoundly um, that even to this day, when I watch it, I still have all those feelings that I, you know, that it just so film. Ever since I was like such a little kid, like that, just really was like an escape, and it was something that you know I really connected to. Like music, there are a lot of movies in the house growing up as well. And, you know, I got into like Disney films and I always loved to watch movies. It was always something. So when it came to school, um, to me, it was kind of like a no brainer that I wanted to get into film. I, I think my mom was kind of like, are you sure you want to do that? Because I don't know if you can get a job <laughs> from that. But she, she was like, if that's what you want to do, then that's what you want to do. So Film studies allowed me to sort of, you know, take that that sort of like desire that I had for loving film to begin with, but then learning more about when it started and, you know, the sort of the pioneers of film that sort of, you know, made a name for themselves. And uh, and the great thing about the film studies program was that while it wasn't production, it was about writing. So I wrote about all of these films that I saw. And so that also developed my my love of writing and my love of like wanting to to um, document, I guess, you know. So, yeah. And so when I got out of the program, I was really happy. The program was great. I mean, it was a long time ago now. I can't believe it, it was like like over 20 years ago now, oh, that I yeah. graduated, which is nuts. I know. It yeah. flying. <laughs> um, but I yeah, I got out of there and I just it was it. there's not as though that there are film jobs knocking on your door kind of thing um so i um did a bit of theater like i i acted a little bit i wrote some plays that were on at the fringe festival like that was really cool it was it was like a good time period like early 20s just sort of yeah. you know wanting to try all of this stuff and then i um i kind of just left it i i you know life happens and you work and you kind of just sort of like you know, paycheck and do what you have to do. And, you know, life goes on kind of thing. And it was only with um, tying it back to my, to my film that I, I'm so happy to talk to you guys about. Um, I Can Dream Theater, which is an organization here in Montreal for um, special needs adults. Uh, and they put on shows, they put on productions. I'm their social media manager. And through working with them and being armed with a video camera, it kind of reignited my brain a little bit in that, oh, maybe we could use film and sort of be able to, you know, do some content that would be really cool to promote the group, but to also yeah. sort of satisfy that creative buzz in my head. So that's honestly really how it happened. And then, you know, I, I initially had made a film about I Can Dream Theater in 2016 called The Making of a Dream, which for me was more of an exercise to see if I could actually make a film right. and finish it, you know, and it, it did, it played very well for the, you know, for the crew and the cast involved. And, you know, we, we rented out a Guzo cinema and it was up on a big screen and it was like, you know, it was really great, but I always thought to myself, okay, so I've kind of opened the window for the idea of making a film. One day I'd like to revisit the idea of making a film for I Can Dream Theater and really do it in a way that is sort of a bit more true to what kind of message I wanted to convey. So that's, uh, that's how sort of the love letter, which is the film that I most recently made happen. Right. 
it's not as though people are going to come knocking on your door to try to give you the opportunity. So you have to make the opportunity for yourself. And when you do that, just really cool things end up happening, like talking to you guys, you know? Hey, well, the cool thing is you're talking to us and <laughs> you're, you're talking about the creative itch. Like you, you, you kind of had that itch and you wanted to do stuff. Well, that's, I think that's how part of the podcast came to be for me. Cause I started, started thinking about it uh, in December and I interviewed on a, a podcast, education-based podcast for a, for a, a guy's company in the States. And he really was like, uh, he was supportive. He says, you know what? You, you make a great podcast host. And, and, I, and I didn't give it two thoughts. And then, um, you know, Twitter, you ask questions and people start DMing me and privately and saying, you know what? You should, you should try it out. So I did. And then started in January. And now here we are doing season two and um apart i mean also like i write poetry i, I self-published a book on amazon and i i, I need you need you need that i i kind of need that creative outlet like so it's either i'm pouring cement in the basement or painting or writing or doing this or it's uh it, it's good for your soul right absolutely absolutely if that's sort of what's calling you you have to find a way to to get it out there for sure well, well i'm happy i'm happy that uh you fell back in love with uh filmmaking after a little bit of a break yeah so we'll go through well we'll get to the love letter but you you have a short film called included mm -hmm. which uh which is a workplace about workplace inclusion and it won an honorable mention award at the 2019 canada shorts film festival it did yeah so tell us a little bit about that so um the <laughs> the origin of how included happened is pretty funny actually so my my buddy sam is a, a manager of some physio clinics in montreal and um again it sort of ties into i can dream theater his he actually was the title sponsor for one of i can dream theater's shows oh nice so like he it was a really great partnership between the two of them but when that was finished, he really wanted to do more. So he actually ended up hiring three individuals who are part of the Icon Dream Theater cast as part of his team um, at his physio clinics. Oh, wow. And these three individuals are, are both, actually now they're four. Yeah, it ended up being four people in the end. Um, they're both, at, they're all adults on the uh, spectrum. Right. And, um, ended up working beautifully and they're still with him to this day. So, you know, one summer in 2018, I was at his house and uh, we were talking and I was just, I was saying to him, you know, I really feel like I want to make a film again. And, you know, I don't know what, and, you know, whatever. And, you know, he randomly kind of just said to me, you should make a film about us at the clinic or make a video. He, I think he even said, you should make a video about us at the clinic or whatever. And when he said that, it kind of like, you know, it triggered something in my head that I thought, mm, I don't know if this is just a video. I feel like this might be a deeper story really yeah. to, to share. So I went with my camera. I went to his clinic. I, you know, did some interviews with some of his staff and I interviewed obviously the, um, the adults, the, the four adults. Um, and as I was putting the footage together, I was like, this is a really amazing thing that he's done, A. B, it's given them such confidence in themselves and such support that, you know, they feel like they're part of something. Yeah. And I was like, more people need to know what you guys are doing. Like, this is really great. So the film kind of came together on its own, really. Like, you know, editing, it was so much fun. I love editing. I like, I'm addicted to editing div like movies and videos and stuff. So while I was editing it, I kept thinking, oh my God, this is really like a great story. Like, this is so good. And I like the fact that, you know, um, it wasn't necessarily my point of view that was coming off in the film. I was actually giving the opportunity for them to speak and for the, to you, for them to use their own voices yeah. versus me trying to like, you know, lead the conversation or whatever. It was really coming from them. Anyways, um, he had a, every year at the end of the year, he has a Christmas party for his staff. And he said, you know what, why don't we show the film to the staff at the Christmas party? And that will be, you know, the sort of launch of, of included. 
So, you know, it had, by this point, it had been about five or six months that I've been working on it. And I was really nervous now opening it up to like a whole bunch of other people who could, you know, massacre it if they wanted to or, you know, whatever. Did anybody see it prior to that? Like you were the only one because you were editing it? Sam, Sam did. Um, and that was it. Like, I don't think we really showed it to anybody else. Right. Um, yeah, actually, you know what? I think our wives saw it. I think they maybe saw an early cut of it to be, and they were like, this is really good. Uh -huh. And usually my wife is really good at telling me like, you know, you should work on this. You should change this, whatever. And when she's had nothing to say, I was like, Ooh, I think Ooh. we might have something here, you know? Yeah. So I was just wondering too, uh, like you're talking about like, you know, editing with movies and everything. Uh, what's your idea when it comes to like short uh, realms or like even uh, TikTok videos? towards like let's say a movie um well see this is funny this is where my daughter comes in because obviously uh. she's on tiktok and she's like completely you know and i initially thought you know tiktok was just an app to just sort of dance on and just sort of like do like silly things what i've been seeing is that people like a lot of educators are using tiktok in their classes and sometimes my daughter will sort of show me other things be like you know daddy look at this and yeah, the stuff on there is pretty cool. It's like really, really sharp and like fast paced and quick. And yeah, I think I think it's that's the future. I really think, you know, something like TikTok has the, you know, you know, here I was saying, you know, we make the, our own opportunities to do stuff. Here are kids who are armed with this app and they're being able to like put stuff out there for people to see that could be really amazing. I'm not saying everything on TikTok is fantastic, yeah. but uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that's out there for sure on there. I think it's great. I, I find uh, I find TikTok like well, like you said. I thought it was just people making dancing videos, and then I started using it. I was dabbling in it a little bit. I still like I didn't understand, so I'm like I'm gonna leave it to the side. But periodically, I'll when I'm bored, I'll look at it and be like, Hey, how's this guy doing his bathroom? Oh, how's he pouring th cement? Yeah. <laughs> and there's like, like probably that. twenty million views on it or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly yeah it's pretty crazy it's really crazy yeah as a as a social media manager you're just you're not handling tiktok you're doing yeah we're just, we're for i can dream we're really just sticking to to facebook twitter and instagram right maybe we'll get to tiktok though that might be something that could be cool to explore i think actually you know shorts burst uh little 30 second clips or something relating yeah. to that would, that would be interesting. Movie, it's, yeah, for it, sure. it's almost like a promo towards like some of your movies or, or like a trailer or something. Oh my gosh. You're giving me so many ideas <laughs> now, man. Thanks. That's what? awesome. <laughs> What's the name of the song by the brother and sister? Do you know yet? <sighs> oh man. <laughs> blank, blank spaces right now. You're letting us down, Mr. D. You're Wait, letting us on, down. You, you, uh, you, sit, you sit there and you think about it a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. it's gonna I'm, it's gonna come to my mind I'm, I'm telling you it's coming to finish my story we showed yeah. the film at the at the christmas party and so the parents were in there staff were in there like everybody was there and they all gave it a standing ovation at the end and it was so moving to sort of see especially the parents of these adults sort of seeing their their children speak so beautifully about what it feels like to be working in a positive and supportive environment yeah, it was it was amazing to see. And so we ran with it, like the the sort of like success or the 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 promotion that we had with included was awesome. We were on the radio, we were on TV. We ended up going to Toronto to the uh, Spectrum Works um, Autism Work Fair, yeah. which is and they invited us like it was really great. Like it was a lot of really cool stuff that happened. If you steal my sunshine, that was the name of the song. Oh, are they brother and sister? Yeah, it just came no to my way. mind right now. <laughs> they were playing that for two weeks straight. It's true. That is an earworm, and I I like that song still. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it had the one hit wonder, and they're just playing it back for like the last two weeks on almost all the radio stations. Like 20, 23 years later. That's so funny. And they're Canadian, right? They were Canadian. Yep. Yeah. I was, I was just gonna say I, I thought they were Canadian, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's where they're playing it on the radio all this, all this time that's so funny uh so your short film included uh it's it's funny though you you, you talk about the parents giving a standing ovation and really proud that they're that they're well, grown children as adults are, are part of something or are contributing or 
or you know or working or actually have a job and 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 you get to display it this way through a, through a film i speak like i speak to parents yearly about things like this they always like what do you think my son or daughter is going to do when they when they're when they grow up when they're a teenager when they're adult and depending on if you if you're on the autism spectrum it's hard to say yeah. uh, but it's important to build those skills and i always talk to parents i'm like teach them life skills teach them practical things that they can learn and develop themselves and you know so they can work in the future and uh absolutely participate and be happy and and safe so that's that's it's awesome to hear so you know has has a special place in my heart being a special education teacher nice that's great that's awesome so yeah so your your short film included and now we're going to get to your current film the love letter which was selected part of the London edition of the Lift Off Global Network Film Festival and the Four Theater Film Festival. So there's some happenings here. Tell me about it. Yeah. So um, it's like, let's go back to 2020 again. 2020 starts. I Can Dream Theater is about to start putting on a production again. And then COVID hits and everything right. stops. Yeah. And we thought, you know, I naively thought, oh, this is only going to last for two weeks. Everyone keeps saying it's just two weeks. So we'll wait till two weeks passes and it'll be all good. That's what we thought. So, yeah. Clearly it wasn't two weeks. And um, the organizers of the directors of the group had to make the decision to say, OK, we're not doing a show in 2020 because right. nothing is happening. Yeah. So 2021, beginning of 2021, um, uh, they're still really ambivalent as to like, you know, maybe everything will be okay in 2021, but right now I'm, we're still nervous and stuff. And as we were talking, it occurred to us that 2021 was the 10 year anniversary of I can dream theater. And I thought, Oh my God, we have to commemorate this in some way still, but how, like we didn't know how, because if we couldn't get together, if we couldn't put a show together, how do we still commemorate it? So I immediately said, I'm going to do a documentary. And like I said, I had made a documentary on them already. And I thought this was the, like I said, this was the time where I felt like I could make the film on them that I wanted to make. Um, I, I mean, I, I have no regret with the first film I made on them, but I did feel that it really was coming from my perspective, that film the questions that were asked, you hear my voice through the whole thing, which I'm like, I don't really like my voice. Um, so like, it was just, it was a lot of like my perspective where that film was concerned. So I knew going into this one, I really, again, wanted it to be about the cast. Right. Nobody else. I didn't want to talk to volunteers. I really wanted to talk to the cast. So we had an, a Zoom session very early on in 2021 and the whole cast was on there. And I proposed the idea to them and everybody was so excited. And I said, okay, so I'm going to be tough with you guys. I'm going to give you like a package where I'm going to tell you, this is what you have to film on your phones. This is what you have to answer. Um, if this doesn't look good, I'm going to ask you to do it again. Like I was really like, if we're going to do this properly, you have to sort of follow these guidelines kind of right. thing. So everybody was on board. I sent them like my general questions, which was a lot of like, you know, what was your favorite production that you did? Um, what is the group brought to your life? You know, very general questions. But the response that I got back from them was more than I could have ever imagined. It was just profound. And it just showed that it's not just a theater group for these individuals. It's, uh, it's, it's part of their life. It's family. Were, it's deep. Yeah. And they were missing it. I mean, they weren't be able to. They weren't able to be together, right? right? So, the videos that were coming back were amazing. And I, what I was doing was, I was also also um, incorporating clips from productions as well. So, I I interviewed the directors and asked them to just do some voiceover. I didn't sort of film them, and I had clips from past shows. I talked to some former cast members as well to see if they'd be interested in in doing this. And a few of them said yes, which was great. So I got their perspective as well. Um, and then the film slowly, again, it just started to come together. It was really like, you know, great to sort of, if, if a cast member said my favorite production was this production and then to cut to a clip from it, like it was just, everything really flowed really, really nicely. 
Um, so I finished, I started the film, I guess, in February of 2021. And I finished it in at the beginning of November of 2021. So it was an intensive sort of uh, time to sort of put this film together. Yeah. How, how many hours did you put on it? Uh, it I, I couldn't even tell you. It was really like, I was always on my laptop. Right. I was always editing. I was always tweaking. Yeah. And like, even there was even points where um, I, I had asked them, one of the videos I had asked them to do was to a free for all video. Like I said, send me whatever you want. You want to sing a song, you want to dance, you want to read a part from a film that you like, do whatever you want and send it to me. So they were sending me all of these pieces and I was putting it in the film. And then as I was watching, I was like, this doesn't fit. Like this really doesn't fit with the rest of the story of, of the group and its legacy and stuff. So I was just like, you know, I'd have this, all this extra footage and I felt bad. I was like, you know, they did all this nice stuff and I'm not going to use it in the film or they're going to be upset at me. Like, what am I going to do? And it was my, uh, my wife's cousin who said, you could make an entirely short little film just based on that footage and not include it in the love letter, but at least yeah. you'll have it and you'll still use it. And it was like a light bulb went off. I was like, oh my God, that's the greatest idea ever. So I took that footage and I made it into a little tiny thing. And that way they still felt like what they did was being used, which was awesome. Um, so yeah, so it was just a constant, like <laughs> there was a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, so I can't, I couldn't even tell you how many hours it was. It was a lot. It's really, it's really about the editing at the end. The editing puts all the yeah. film together and tells a story. Yeah. Like you were saying, if it doesn't flow, then it kind of, kind of defeat the purpose of what you're doing. So exactly, exactly. I kind of, I'm, I mean, I'm learning editing with audio, so that that's that's yeah, my, that's been my shtick for the last uh, couple of months there. But uh, a video, I was talking to Mr. D about it. I'm like, maybe in the future we'll go and do like a video podcast. We'll we'll set up a nice background and we'll do that. But I think that's a skill I, I would uh, I might have to pick your brain in the future about uh, video hey, editing. I'm around. I'm yep. around. So we um, finished the film and the, I, the idea was always to put it out on YouTube. That was the way we wanted. I wanted to share it from the get go. So um, but I had said, you know, what would be fun is if we could do like a, a screening of it just for the cast. And by November, we were allowed to gather again. Yeah. So we um, we did a screening uh, downtown where most of the cast was able to come and they were the first ones to actually see it. So that was so much fun. They were so happy to be back together again. And then to finally see the film after all these months of me sort of like annoying them with like, it's coming soon and it's nearly done. They were finally <laughs> able to see it. That was really, that was really, really great. And then we put it out on YouTube at the beginning of December and we we're already at close to like, we're over 2000 views already, which is awesome. I remember, I remember you sharing it with me and asked, you asked me to share it on Twitter. Yeah. And it was it, I think it was around then. Yeah, it probably was. It might have been probably around then. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's been really great. The response to it has been really. It's been great for fans of the group already who have been like, "Oh, this makes me miss them," and this makes me, you know, wish that there's a production soon. And then it was great for people who had no idea who they were, who were like, "What is this? This is awesome. This is so great that they do this," you know. So that was fun for those the newbies to be able to to you know share their message to to them. That's that's awesome. Do you have anything else planned going forward <laughs> or, or it's a secret? It's kind of a secret. I have to say uh, I am. I am sort of uh, slowly working on something, but yeah, I don't think I'm ready to share it just yet. I'm not. I, I do think right now it's it's something written. OK, but I mean, it could end up being something I could end up. I probably will end up doing some sort of film like thing with it, too, but. Yeah, it's still very in its embryo state right. that I can't really say. It's, it's on yeah. the drawing board. You don't want to give anything away just in case exactly. you change your mind or save it for a rainy day type of thing. Exactly, but, uh, exactly. But, but uh, you know, the creative itch is always there. So I'm sure I'm sure it's going to be amazing. I hope so. I hope so. It, it will. I uh, no doubt it. Um, but part of part of our thing is when when people come on and and in general, when we give shout outs to people, we, we talk about their social media presence. So you're on YouTube, you're on Twitter. Well, first tell us about your, your, 
your filmmaker name Riley Piley. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, that's it. Riley Piley Films. How'd you come up with that? When I was um, working on the first film for I Can Dream, I was struggling with, oh, I should come up with a, a like a quasi-production name. And I wasn't, I, I wasn't feeling it. I was like, I don't know what to call this. Like, this is crazy or whatever. Um, and then Riley Piley comes from Riley is my daughter's middle name. And Riley Piley was what my wife would sort of call her as a nickname sometimes. And it was my wife who said, what about Riley Piley? And I kind of thought, oh, that's, I like that. That's cute. It's like, it's a connection with my family and it's a connection to, to her. And that's sort of how the name came about. Yeah. Uh, you also have a logo for, yes. for Riley Piley. And uh, I was actually looking at, I was looking at your website and I, uh, somebody made it for you. Uh, yes. I, it's really, it's really nice. The logo. Yeah. That was my, my cousin, Stephanie. She is uh, an artist. She's amazing. And uh, when I had finally come up with the name Riley Piley films, she was the first person I thought of. And I said, Hey, do you think maybe you might want to make a little logo for me? And she was so happy that I asked and, she came up with that and she had my daughter in mind when she, she came up with the logo. So the logo is a little girl, you know? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's, it was really, I like to keep it within the family. So it's really sweet that she was able to do that. It's a great name. It's a great logo. Having said that you're on, you have a website, you're on Instagram, right on yeah. Instagram, Riley Piley films. Yep. Twitter, the same, uh, same handle Riley Piley films. Uh, YouTube right. channel Riley Piley Films. Yep. Right. We're repeating. Can't forget it. It's Can't forget it. <laughs> and also, you have your website, uh, Merrill Jude Matthews. Dot uh, site Dot com slash Riley Piley. And I'm actually, I have actually have it open right now. Um, you got at the top. You got your the making of a dream circles included. Summer Sun disconnect united. The love letter. There's a whole slew of uh, content on there. You also have um, a, a slot for media. So uh, I was looking at it, and you had you were been on CT, you've been on City News uh, on January sixth, where they talk about the Montreal film. They talk about for the ten year anniversary. You were on CJD Radio. You had an interview with uh, with Ken. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there's also a, a picture of the newspaper clip of you uh, with the Montreal Gazette doing the uh, documentary for ten, celebrating 10 years of the magic uh, of the magic at I can dream theater. So you've done a lot, a lot of, uh, well, I'd say interviews and uh, local like Montreal uh, talks with people. And uh, is there anything that stands out from that? Cause you've done a bunch of them. I see. Yeah. I think again, it goes back to if you want, if you want something to happen, you have to make it happen yourself. So it was me who really, you know, knocked on doors and said, Hey, this is a, this is a film that I made. And I think it's a great story to, to share. Um, and uh, it, everyone was really on board very quickly. The thing with the Gazette, which is really, I'm quite proud of that is that I've been trying to get the Gazette to do a piece on I can dream theater for literally for the 10 years that it's been around Oh yeah, and it's never happened. It's never, you know, not anyone's fault or not, you know, whatever. It was always sort of like this, like, unattainable like you know brass ring that was there and I was like oh it's too bad we you know we'd, we'd be on tv and like there's been all kinds of stuff but never the gazette and then with the film it just right away it was just kind of like when I sort of sent off the film to to Bill Brownstein uh he immediately wrote back and was like hey let's talk let's do this and I was like yes the gazette yes, finally <laughs> yeah. I harass you every happened. year for 10 yeah. years, <laughs> but, but yeah. you have to be, you have to be uh, proactive. You have to definitely kind of be your own advocate and, and do those things. So Big time. Big time. Uh, I was wondering about that. Cause it's not easy. And, and sometimes they just, they don't know, like they don't know yeah. necessarily what you're doing out there. And um, totally. there was, uh, you've been in the, you've been mentioned in the suburban and inspiration newsletter and cbc radio and you've like you've done a quite a bit of uh quite a bit of media in montreal so that's pretty cool I've, i'm really uh, i'm happy and impressed Needless to say, it's, it's really it's fantastic and your website's great so again if anybody wants to check it out merrill jude matthews dot wix site dot com slash riley piley 
And I also recommend checking out uh, Merrill's YouTube channel, Riley Piley Films. I don't know that this is uh, this is great. Honestly, we're we're trying to bring more stories like this, trying to give the Mr. Mike podcast wrong answers only like a different feel for the second season. Sure. And we're really happy that a lot of them are local too. That's what we're actually excited about. For sure, absolutely. It's, yeah, we're trying. We're trying to get. We're trying to get some local people like yourself on here and uh, make make it happen, make it interesting, make it fun, and and try to uh, feed feed the need for that creative itch. Absolutely, that's great. It's great that you guys are doing that. It's awesome. Uh, so, uh, having said that, having gone through your films, is there anything you'd like to add, or is there where do you see yourself going forward now? Because I know you got, like you said, you had like a another film in. in preliminary in production or maybe on paper but yeah. uh where do you see yourself in in 10 years right from now with with regards to like the film industry or short films um i mean i really just see myself still creating content that's who i am and and with stories that i i want to tell i mean i my I mean, the bulk of my films have really been about the special needs community, which is a community that I adore. And, you know, I, I really connect with marginalized groups in general. And I feel like their story, there's so many stories there to tell. That being said, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing or creating more stories that are, you know, not just about the special needs community, that, but about other things too even fiction as well. I mean, I find right now I'm connecting more, you know, it even goes back to my reading and stuff, what I'm connecting with stories, real stories about people, about humans and yeah. stuff. So I feel like that will always be something that I'm always going to want to explore. So yeah, I would say, sure. 10 years from now, I could see myself having a couple more films under my belt about, you know, some interesting people or interesting, you know, uh, organizations or stories that are happening for sure have you written any uh any scripts for some movies that you you haven't shown anybody not not in terms of what we were talking about before but like something out of the ordinary that you, you haven't done before like uh something creative maybe uh fiction i i haven't recently to be honest no. i really i find like i've been very much connecting with documentary filmmaking yeah. for the most part the last couple of years I feel like when I was in film school, I think I definitely wrote a lot of fiction. Like I said, I had plays and stuff, like I said, at the fringe that were all fiction based and, you know, that was super creative and, you know, super um, fun and, and, you know, ridiculous, but the, like the way the fringe is because the fringe is so open to all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's been a while since I've written something that was just sort of like, you know, out of the, out of the blue or like, you know, out of the realm of like what I, would you normally do but who knows it might happen who knows i i have a couple of uh children's picture books that i've written that are on uh rough draft for years uh, and oh nice i i actually have one that i've talked to a couple of places about uh i've gotten a bunch of rejection emails um that as the story goes with most things right so i don't know it's one of those things where you're like eh, maybe maybe it happens maybe it doesn't happen but it's it's kind of fun to do it. Like, it's like, you never know. Listen, I think you should totally run with it. I have a friend of mine in Toronto who um, she self made a, a children's book herself and it's awesome. She's an animator. So she drew all the pictures. That's in amazing. It and, yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. It's such a great, great little book that she's, that she's done. And the thing is now you can do it even like on eBooks too. Yeah. So you can really diversify. Totally. And I think that's what's great about, you know, social media and stuff has its like crazy side. But the good thing about all of it is that I think people are empowered to to create and they can do stuff and put it out there and get an audience. Like it's not sort of like this barrier anymore where, you know, oh, I have an idea for a film, but I have to go to a place to develop it. And where do I go? Like everyone's able to sort of like, you know, be their own entrepreneur in some ways, you know. Yeah, for that, for that, I really, uh, I really like social media, and like yourself, I get to connect with a bunch of uh, interesting people, get to see their work. You know, we never know what the we never know what the future holds, but at the same time, if you don't give it a little bit of water, whatever your passion is, it's not going to grow. So you know, you're not expecting to be um, a millionaire overnight. <laughs> put in, put in the hard work, and there you go. As long as you're happy, exactly. 
this has been it's been fantastic, Merrill. Thank you, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, you know, you'll let us you'll keep us up to date with uh, any future projects. Sure thing. I'm happy Absolutely. to share and talk about it. That's it, Mr. D. Any last questions? Definitely uh, interesting talking to you. Uh, we'd like to have you back on. Yeah, that'd be great. Awesome. This has been the Mr. Mike podcast, Wrong Answers Only, with Mr. Mike and Mr. D and special guest, Meryl Matthews, telling you to follow us on all our social media platforms. Check us out on Twitter, Instagram. We are available on all podcasting platforms, whichever is your choice. Check it out. Download, listen, subscribe, review, rate. Uh, We hope to bring you some more interviews some awesome people thank you everyone for tuning in and we'll see you next time